All right, guys. So today we are going to start with the cis-trans isomerism for alkenes. Cis-trans isomerism for alkenes. Okay. So uh, <laughs> basically, we already talked about cis-trans isomerism before. We saw this cis-trans isomerism uh, in uh, cyclic compounds when we, we talk about. Uh, cycloalkanes, we discussed this cis-trans isomerism. If you ask me what is cis-trans isomerism, it is basically uh, an area of stereoisomers where you know you uh, the two isomers have the same atomic connectivity but they are different <coughs> from the uh, 3D, I mean arrangement of atoms in 3D space. Okay, They have the same exact atomic connectivity but their arrangement in 3D space is different. Okay. So basically, here is an example for, for a, a, a cis-trans isomerism. I have two cyclohexane compounds, okay, both are both of them are one, two dimethyl cyclohexane, cyclohexane. But uh, for one two dimethyl cyclohexane, you can have a cis isomer and a trans isomer. In here, the thing about this cis trans isomerism is that the first requirement that you need is to have a restricted motion. Okay, restricted motion, especially uh, in your compound. Okay, so when you have a ring, of course, you know you introduce when you introduce a ring, you introduce restricted motion. Uh, between each of the carbon carbon single bonds right between each of the carbon carbon single bonds so whatever the substituents that you have on the top plane of your ring will never see the bottom plane okay will never see the bottom plane so basically when you have a cyclo ring okay cycloalkane uh, you have a top plane and a bottom plane and the, the two planes will never see each other okay so therefore whatever the substituents that you have on each of these two planes uh, will be fixed when it comes to location. There is no free rotation between the carbon-carbon bonds, right? And then when you have a double bond, you have a similar situation. When you have a carbon-carbon double bond, there is no free rotation between the carbon-carbon double bonds. There is no free, free rotation between the carbon-carbon double bond, mainly because of the pi bond, mainly because of the geometry of the pi bond. You don't have a free rotation around uh, the carbon-carbon double bond. Therefore, when you have a carbon-carbon double bond, when you have a carbon-carbon double bond, you can have two isomers like this. Okay, here is your carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, and then of course, the two carbons that share the double bond can have two other bonds, can have two other bonds. Okay. So basically, let's say you have a substituent right here, let's call, call it A, and then you have a substituent called B, which is right here, okay? So they will permanently be together on the same side. A and B substituents will permanently be together. Why? Because they can't switch sides by rotating around this carbon-carbon double bond, right? Let's say you have a substituent A on this side, and then the substituent B on right here on this bond. Okay, now A and B will permanently be away from each other. Okay, so these two scenarios are completely different, even though they have the same connectivity of atoms. But when it comes to 3D arrangement of these substituents, they are completely different. The two substituents A and B will be on the same side. Uh, for this arrangement, so since the two substituents are on the same side, we can call it cis, we can call it cis. In here, in this isomer, the two substituents are always on the opposite sides, so we can call it trans, just like the way that we named cycloalkanes, okay? So let's call this one trans. So that is cis-trans isomerism. That is cis-trans isomerism for uh, psych, I mean, carbon carbon double bonds okay carbon carbon double bonds uh, but here's the thing uh, if you want cis trans isomerism you can't have scenarios like this you can't have scenarios like this let's say here's your carbon carbon double bond and then here is your substituent A and here is your substituent B but you can't have another substituent B on this side okay then this will not have any cis trans isomerism why because it doesn't really matter I mean, both these substituents are the same thing. 
it's a B. Okay, so if you have the same substituent attached on one of the two carbon carbon double bonds, okay, one carbon of the carbon carbon double bonds, then you will never have this trans isomerism, okay. Do we get it? So this is a this is a no no. There is no substitute. I mean, cis trans isomerism in this situation. Okay, you can't have a double bonded carbon with the same substituent on both locations. Okay, both both bonds. Okay, so that is that is that type of molecules will not have cis trans isomerism. So once again, in, let's go back to the lecture note. In here, I have two butene, two butene. Okay. Butene, where you know the double bond is between the number two and number three carbon. Okay, so you can consider the two CH three groups as your substituents. You you can consider the two CH three groups as your substituents. So in this case, you have the two CH three groups on the same side, so you can call it Cs. Uh, in the left molecule, you have the two CH three substituents uh, on opposite side, so you can call it trans. Okay, so the difference between these. Two butene molecules. These two two butene molecules is where you have the two CH3 groups, right? If the two CH3 groups are on the same side, we call it cis. If the two CH3 groups are on the opposite sides, we call it trans. Or in other words, you can think along hydrogens. If the two hydrogens of the two carbons are on same sides, we call it cis. If the two hydrogens on the two carbons are on opposite sides, we call it trans. Are we good? All right. Okay, so this basically further explains what I just mentioned. Okay, so you can always have cis trans as long as you have two different substituents on the two uh, carbon carbon double bonded carbons. Okay, the, on the two carbon carbon double bonds. But whenever you have a carbon with the same substituent attached for the two bonds, then you will not have cis trans isomerism. Okay. All right. Let's see if you could do this worked example. And if you are watching the video, I want you to pause the video now and then see if you could do this worked example. Okay. All right. By the way, if you are wondering what is triacosine, it actually has 23 carbons. 23 carbons. All right. When, whenever you are approaching a question like this, what matters is. Uh, the isomerism of the carbon carbon double bond is it cis or is it trans is it cis or is it trans so basically if it is cis if it is cis you know that the two hydrogens on the if it is cis the two hydrogens on the carbon carbon double bond should be on the same side right so you can say this is your r1 and this is your r2 so this arrangement is your cis arrangement or cis isomerism cis isomer right so for trans isomer, here is your double bond, and you know that your two hydrogens are, are on opposite sides. So here are the two remaining substituents. So you can say this is your R1 and this is your R2. Okay, so it needs you to write cis triacosine. Okay, so it's it needs you to write cis. So basically, what you need to write, what you need to use is this arrangement. What you need to use is that arrangement. So you basically, what you could do is you can write the carbon carbon double bond. Okay, and then we need C's. So it is this one. Okay, and then uh, basically, in here you have seven carbons, in here you have 12 carbons. Okay, that is the molecule. That is your cis molecule. That is your cis molecule. This right here is your cis. Okay, if you want to expand, see the expanded structure, it is this one. But once again, guys, only you have to pay attention to the two two carbons, number nine and number ten. And as long as you are putting the two hydrogens on the same side, you are fine. Okay, as long as you are putting the two hydrogens on the same side, you are fine. Okay. discuss that so usually when you are locating your double bond in a name mm -hmm. you only use the number of the first oh, carbon oh, okay. Yeah, okay so it is never between 8 and 9 then it will be 8 okay 
So you only use the number of the carbon that comes first, okay? So it is always between number nine and number 10. All right, so let's do a couple more examples, okay? Let's do a couple more examples. Okay, I'm going to draw a couple of uh, compounds and you can characterize them as either cis or trans, okay? Don't take more than 30 seconds to do them, okay? Don't take more than 30 seconds to do them. All right, so here is your first compound. Alright, let's start with the molecule on the left. Is this cis or trans? Huh? Trans. This is trans. This is correct. This is trans. Why? Because the two hydrogens are on opposite sides, right? So that is trans. Am I correct? So is this cis or trans? Cis. cis. Well done. This is cis. Why? Because the two hydrogens are on the same side. Well, let me slightly modify the first molecule. Let me slightly modify the first molecule. Let me do something like this. So let's focus your attention to the molecule on your left. Is this cis or trans? Is this cis or trans? Huh? Trans? Raise your hand if you think this is trans. The way that I say trans, feel like you know something is wrong, right? Okay. Four people. If you think this is six, raise your hand. Okay. Some more people. So, alright. So, raise your hand if you think this is neither. You can't raise your hand for everything. <laughs> so, here's the thing, guys. In here, you have three substituents. You, I mean, you have three substituents or. You can say four different groups on the two carbons, right? So on this carbon right here, you have a hydrogen and a CH3. Now on this carbon right here, let's call it C1 and C2, okay? So on C2, you have a chlorine and an ethyl group, C2H5. C2H5. So you have four different groups attached to, to these two carbons, right? So now, the cis trans wouldn't work because I mean up until now cis trans worked if the two substituents or the two hydrogens are on same side so opposite side so basically you only had two different substituents right two different substituents am I correct but when you have three or four different substituents this cis trans wouldn't work you can no longer you can no longer uh, use the cis trans isomerism to explain this scenario you can't you can no longer use the cis trans isomerism to do this. So now you have a problem. So cis trans wouldn't work. But still, I mean, this is different from this. Do you agree with me? These two are still isomers. Am I correct? These two molecules are still isomers. Why? The methyl group is next to a chlorine in here. In here, the methyl group is opposite to a chlorine. Right? They both have the same attachment of atoms. Okay? But they, their 3D arrangement is still different, so they are still stereoisomers, but they don't fit the classical cis trans argument. Do you agree? So, if that is the case, rather than categorizing them as cis trans, we use a slightly modified uh, argument. We call it E and Z designation. Okay, so rather than calling them cis trans we use something called E and Z system okay E and Z system so this system basically uses something that you're already familiar with it uses something called Khan Ingol Prelog sounds familiar don't say no you're going to fail the exam because we already covered Khan Ingol Prelog sequencing rule remember the R and S R isomer and S isomer yeah right so we already talked about R and S isomerism, right? 
right so to get to ROS remember the clockwise or the counterclockwise thing okay so when you are assigning R and S isomerism okay uh, optical isomers when we talked about optical isomers we try to sequence and prioritize the four substituents around a tetrahedral carbon right we try to prioritize and sequence the four groups that you have around a tetrahedral carbon okay so basically to sequence and prioritize the four groups around a tetrahedral carbon we used this sequencing rule or the Kahn ingol prelog okay this uh, sequencing rule we already are familiar with it so basically this according to this rule you know there are three rules these su three sub rules which you could use to prioritize and sequence substituents right so we are going to use the same exact sequence rule and then we are going to prioritize we are going to prioritize the four substituents we are going to prioritize the four substituents and then we are going to assign E and C to our isomers then we are going to assign E and Z to our isomers are we clear so since we have more than two substituents we are going to prioritize the four substituents that we have and then we are going to assign something called E and Z by the way E and Z is very similar to cis and trans only difference is when you are doing E and Z you have to worry about the priority of the four substituents that you have are we clear so if you remember uh, the sequencing rule, the rule number one was, okay, take a look at the atomic number of the atom that is directly attached to the tetrahedral carbon, or in this case, the carbon-carbon double bond, right? So look at the atomic number uh, of, of, the, of the atom that is directly attached, okay? So if, if it is high, you get the, the substituent gets high priority. If the atomic number is low, the substituent gets a lower priority if you remember that okay so here is our molecule here is our molecule okay and then according to this first rule according to this first rule okay first of all you you take a look at the two carbons separately okay so let's talk about the carbon in the left let's talk about the carbon in the left this carbon has two substituents of course I mean one substituent one is hydrogen the other one is a methyl group right <coughs> so carbon right here has atomic number six hydrogen has an atomic number one right so which one has the highest priority methyl group this is the high priority one this is the high priority one based on the atomic number and you look at this carbon and this substituent has the atomic number what 17 and then uh, ethyl group is also attached by a carbon so this carbon is again a 6 so 17 again 6 which one is high chlorine has high priority uh -huh. so basically when you consider the carbon carbon double bond the two high priority groups are on the same side am I correct the two high priority ones are on the same side so we call this cis we call this cis right wrong unfortunately there is no cis and trans cis and trans so we call this EOZ and the other one will be the remaining EOZ get it so this will not be Z cis don't don't use cis okay instead if the two high priority ones are on the same side rather than calling it cis you call it Z you can remember it like Z for cis, okay, something like that. Get it? Z for cis. Get it? So cis is like this, okay. Anyway, whatever floats your boat, okay. So the cis-like thing is Z, okay. Cis-like thing is C, and then the trans-like thing is E. Is E. So this one has the two high priority ones on opposite sides. Okay, so this is your E. Okay, that is how you assign E and Z. Okay, the one like cis, we call it Z. Don't call it cis, okay? Whenever you write cis, think like, oh, there's no cis. Let me write E, okay? Are we good? So this is how we do it. 
and of course you know the second and third steps to this rule okay if you are worried about uh, two substituents with the immediate atom that is the same uh, in both occasions and then you can actually worry about the next atom okay so we already talked about rule number two and three okay rule number three is basically when you have multiple bonds okay so we are, we are, are familiar with all these uh, three steps so we will basically use the same kind of knowledge in order to understand uh, uh, the priorities okay so with that knowledge okay here is a summary once again z geometry is like the cis one okay so you have the two high priorities or you can say two low priorities on the same side so the the z geometry is like the cis geometry okay z for cis okay don't write it out it, it it everyone will mark it wrong okay but that is how it that is how you remember it okay and then the, if the two high priorities are on the opposite sides okay or if the two low priorities are on the opposite sides we call it not trans but e okay e all right keeping that in mind let me give you a small example to try on the board and then you will try the worked example it is a little bit hard Let's see if you could figure out the E and Z uh, system for this particular molecule. And if you are watching the video, you might want to pause now. Explain, okay? So you assign high and low priorities to one carbon. How about the other carbon? Do this as well. Yeah, you have to do that as well. Of course. Okay. So what happens to the two low priorities? Are they on the same side or are they on the opposite sides? Oh. Huh? They are on opposite sides. Yeah. So if the two low priorities ones are or high priorities ones are opposite sides. That's like trans, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you call that? E or Z? Is it E or is it Z? It's E. e. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Okay. <laughs> you got the answer, but I mean, now you get it, right? Now you understand it, right? So let me explain it one more time. Okay. Let Let me explain it one more time. Thank you, by the way. Okay. So you wanna treat the two carbons separate. Okay. This carbon is called carbon number one and carbon number two. Let's treat them separate. Treat them separate. That is important, okay? And then for this carbon, this chlorine, of course, has the high priority. And this isopropyl group will have the low priority, okay? And if you talk, talk about the methyl group and ethyl group, of course, ethyl group has the high priority, okay? According to rule number two. Rule number two, okay? Both, both these substituents have the same same atom attached a carbon directly to the carbon that we are interested in so they, that's a tie but you go, go to the next atom and th this carbon has a carbon and two hydrogens this carbon has what just three hydrogens okay so basically we are worried about the carbon and two hydrogens or three hydrogens when it comes to the second second atom okay so of course the carbon and three hydrogens wins out, right? According to rule number two. So that group will be high priority. High priority, okay? And you should be familiar with them because today is your exam due date, right? So these things are heavily tested in your exam. Okay, so don't dream walk now, okay? Alright, so the two high priorities are on opposite sides, so the arrangement is known as E. It looks like a trans, but we call it E. 
Okay. All right. So let's try the worked example. So if you are watching the video, you might want to pause now and then see if you could figure this one out by yourself. that you want to do is you want to draw this molecule in 2D space of course you know these 3D diagrams could be confusing so I hope that you guys have already drawn this structure on your book Is that correct guys? Yes. Certainly looks like it, right? But hey, this molecule is actually super hard. So good job, okay, good job. He did it correctly, but let me explain one more time, okay? Raise your hand if you got this. <coughs> Raise your hand, only two people, come on. Okay, all right, let, let's do this, let's do this. Let's do this. So the first objective is to draw this whole thing on, on the board or in your textbook of course, okay? If I ever give you questions like this in the exam, sometimes I do, okay? You, you want to put them in like, you know, the skeletal structures or condensed structures, okay? So basically you know that carbons are the dark gray balls, hydrogens are the light gray balls, and then oxygen are the red balls, okay? Oxygen are the red balls, okay? So is your carbon carbon double bond that is the most important thing and then you have another carbon carbon double bond to the top but here's the good thing about this carbon carbon double bond the leftmost carbon has two hydrogens so there is no E and C for this double bond okay so there is no E and C for this double bond only this one what is it okay and I use a propyl group okay so he drew the two substituents correctly and then let's go to the other substituent. So you have a carbonyl group, an oxygen and a CH3. Right, and then the other substituent is actually what? A CH2OH. CH2OH. Let's prioritize them. This is actually somewhat difficult, okay? So let's separate the two carbons. We don't want the two carbons messing with each other, right? So let's worry about them. So let's first talk about these these two substituents, okay? The, the, the two substituents on the leftmost carbon, okay? So both carbons that are, both atoms that are immediately attached to the carbon-carbon double bond are carbons, that's a tie, that's a tie. So you go to the next atom. So for this carbon, the next atom will be a hydrogen, which is this one, and then a carbon and a carbon. Remember, according to rule number three, if you have multiple bonds, each bond is like a separate bond to a separate atom, okay? So you have a hydrogen, a carbon, and a carbon. If you take a look at this one, if you take a look at this one, this is again a carbon, so the next atom is what? The hydrogen, the carbon, and a carbon. So that's a tie. Oh my God, the second atom is also a tie, right? So now we have quite the problem, okay? So let's erase that. You go to the next atom. In here it is this one right here, okay? And this one. So these are the two atoms of interest now. They are both carbon, so let's go to the attached atoms, okay? So for this one, so for this one you have a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Okay, a carbon, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. So for this one you have, you can say two carbons and then a hydrogen, a hydrogen. Okay, or in other words, you know, one bond is already from this one, so it is a carbon, a hydrogen, a hydrogen. For this one it is just three hydrogens. Why? It's a, it's a CH3 group, so it is three hydrogens. H, H, H. Finally, we have some separation, so this double bond group is the the double bond group is the high priority. High priority. Let's go to this one. First atom is a carbon, that's a tie. That's a tie. Go to the second atom. 
It needs an oxygen, oxygen, and an oxygen. So this one is definitely high priority. Why? Because it has three oxygens. For this one, it is hydrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Of course, you see the high priority one, which is the top one, right? So top one is the high priority group. So here is your high priority. So it looks like cis, but there is no cis strands in this. So it is Z, Z for cis, right? So this is Z. Yay! Good job. Hi. Right, good job, Ben. Okay. All right, so let's let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Have you seen my clicker? Oh, I see. All right. Hey, here's the thing. Okay, there is always a fifty-fifty chance to get this correct. Okay, but don't be that guy who's going to get the fifty percent chance and then not understand this stuff. Okay. All right. So the next thing that we are going to talk about is stability of alkenes. Stability of alkenes.